But Jesus, tell you, all judgment was given unto him. And he was going to raise everybody up when? At the last day. Not when somebody dies. At the last day. These ministers, these false prophets, and I'm not dealing with that today, but it irks me. I was at a funeral this past week, and it just bristled me, angered me. I'm listening to this man lie to these people boldly, and they just eating it up. Eating it up. But then again, in part, it is what they want to hear. And they say, preach unto me smooth things. Preach unto me lies and deceit. And he, oh, he abided. He preached to them. Told them all the good things about somebody going to heaven. Nobody, nobody, nobody is going to heaven. God's going to establish his kingdom here on this earth. The only place people are going, you got two places to go. You're either going to get into the kingdom or you are going to be in the lake of fire. And what determines your eternal desti destiny, if you will, is whether or not you're going to be obedient to God's commandments. He said, but this, she gave up the dead which were in him. Death and the hell. This hell is talking about the grave. It delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to the works as Jesus said was going to take place. He said, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to judge every man according to their works. And what took place? Go ahead. The death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Uh -huh. This is the second death. Go ahead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the one, what causes you to get Everlasting damnation. What did Jesus say? All that in the grave will hear my voice. They won't come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. What causes one to get into the lake of fire is their refusal to be obedient unto God. They did not have good works, they did not keep God's commandments. That's what this is all about. God created man. And then he gave us his word. As an instruction manual as to how we are to live this life. We are to live in the present being mindful of what's to take place in the future. Because this is all temporal. All this is going to perish including life itself. But John said your works are going to follow you because you are going to be judged in accordance to your works. That's the whole duty of man, as Solomon said, fit God and keep his commandments, because he's going to bring every work into judgment, whether it be good or whether it be evil. We're going to all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the things that are done in this body. But it has to be done in accordance to God's word in order for it to be accepted unto him. Turn to Matthew 15, chapter. Because we're going to see that when it comes to serving God, you've got to obey him according to what's written. Otherwise, your worship will be for naught. It will be in vain. And Jesus shows us that here. And I remember for myself, I can't say that I was an overly religious person. I tried to go to church. I couldn't get nothing out of it. Because I realized from a young age, from a small child, I saw a minister do something. And I knew something wasn't right about him. I knew someone right about the whole situation. I was probably about 10 years old, 9 to 10, but I realized something was not right, and I could never quite put my hands on it, could never grasp what they were getting out of, out of the service. It never made sense to me. It truly didn't. I tried to go off and on. But then when I, God was merciful to me, and he opened up his word, and I realized what this truth is, and even in examining this, never thought people don't have, don't know this is in the Bible. They are serving God diligently in their own mind. Because they're serving him contrary to his word. 
Here Jesus is being questioned about his disciples and what it is that they're doing. And we want to pay close attention to the reply that he gives. 15 and 1, go ahead when you get there. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, uh -huh. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? So they're concerned about man's traditions. But what was that? What was the tradition they were in question about? Go ahead. Well, they wash not their hands when they eat bread. He said they eat bread with defiled hands. They're not washing their hands when they eat bread. Look here. If you want to eat your bread with some dirty hands, that's between you and your body. They got nothing to do with the Lord. But go ahead. What did Jesus tell them? But again, them being concerned about their traditions. Go ahead. But he answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Again, God's holy days have been replaced by man's holidays. And people will question you. They will look at you like the Passover is getting ready to come up. And if you talk to somebody about observing the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they'll look at you like... First of all, they tell you, aren't those days, don't they belong to the Jews? See, they have no understanding. They don't know who Israel is. But all God's holidays, everybody gets to observe them. But then look at you again. Here it is, you are doing something that is out, that is written in the Bible. Leviticus 23 outlines all of God's holy days. And yet and still... They'll be observing something that you can't find nowhere in the scriptures. You got to go outside the Bible to find anything about Christmas and about Good Friday and Easter and Sunday worship. That in itself should be a red flag. That should tell people something is wrong here. How is it that what I'm doing when it comes to serving God cannot be found in the word of God? But they want to question an individual that is trying to keep the commandments of God in accordance to what's written. As they say, do it, take all that, and take all that. God, if it was as simple as you under grace, you say, that would have been one sentence. You got this whole Bible for a reason. He gave it to us again so that we'll understand how we can get or what we need to do in order to get salvation. Paul told Timothy to make the wise, the Holy Scriptures were given to make the wise unto salvation. But he answered and told him, why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? He's going to give an example of what it is that they did. Go ahead. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. Uh -huh. And he that curses father or mother, let him die the death. And that was unconditional. Go ahead. Well, what did they come up with? But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift. Uh -huh. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Go ahead. And honor not his father or his mother, He shall be free. Because if you look at it as being a gift, Then the gifts are freely given. So if you don't do it, Then you absolve yourself. With, because again, you look at it, well, it's, a, it's a gift. So if I don't choose to do that, because with a gift, that's what you do. You choose to give a gift or not. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, you honor your father and your mother. And I say, when I say Jesus didn't say that, because he is the God that gave those commandments on Mount Sinai. He is the God that wrote it in stone with his own fingers. He is the God, he is the only God that man has ever known. But again, they said, whosoever should say to his father, he said, whosoever should say to his father or his mother, that is a gift by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, what is, and he shall be free. What has he done? Go ahead. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Just like when people observe Christmas, just like when they observe Easter and Good Friday, the Lord ain't never told nobody to honor his birth. Can't find it nowhere in the Bible. And they will plainly say, we don't know when he was born. Ain't told nobody to have a holy convocation on the first day of the week. And in doing so, they made the commandments of God of none effect. Because they don't honor his holy days. They don't keep his commandments. What did he call them? Verse number seven. Ye hypocrites. And rightfully so. Go ahead. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you saying, 
What? This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. Go ahead. And honoreth me with their lips. They can praise the Lord up and down. They will have a praise fest. But he's calling them hypocrites for a reason. And the reason being is, is because they won't do nothing he said. And Jesus say, why do you call me Lord, Lord, yet not do the things that I say? Calling on the Lord and willfully going contrary to his word, prayers are falling on deaf ears. God is not hearing that whatsoever. And people think that they are getting over, but they are not. They are just simply getting back because there is a day of judgment that awaits all of us. He said his people draw nigh to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But what about their mind? Go ahead. Well, their heart is far from me. Again, they profess to believe in the Lord, but their actions show that they have no faith. Because faith is simply your belief evidenced by your actions. If you believe something, and then you act in accordance to it, that shows that you believe. But to profess that you believe God and not do anything, he said, it's just like a parent and a child. And a parent telling the child, don't do something. Make sure you be home by 10 o'clock. And the child say, yeah, I understand you. I heard you. And the child comes in at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. What does that tell a parent? They didn't care what you had to say. They weren't thinking about what you had to say. That fun that they was having in the streets was more important than what you told them. Other words, they ain't believe nothing that came out of your mouth. And that's what we show God when we don't keep his commandments. We don't believe nothing that is written in this book. Nothing whatsoever. No matter how much we say that we love him, well, what did Jesus tell us? But in vain they do worship me. He said, but they laboring for nothing. Go ahead, those that do what? Teaching for doctrines the commandments of me. Look, if you worship God in accordance to commandments issued by man, he said, then your worship, your service is going to be all for nothing. It's not going to profit you anyway. And to think about what the Lord has said, you can worship him. People have been in church all their life doing things that are not going to benefit them when it comes to the Lord. And Jesus told us that here. Turn to Matthew, the seventh chapter. It's not enough knowing you got to do something. You got to make sure you know what it is you are supposed to do so you can get it right. You got to obey God, but you got to obey him in accordance to his commandments if it is to benefit you. If you are to lay hold on eternal life, as Jesus said, you got to keep the commandments. Not the commandments of men, because then you are serving men. You are being obedient to, to men, and that's going to lead to death. You got to obey God's commandments. That's what's going to lead to eternal life. 7 and 13. What does he tell them here? Go ahead. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Go ahead. Wide is the gate. Uh -huh. Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. What? And many there be which go in there. And when you look at the world today, you see how true the word of God is. The majority of people that call themselves worshiping God are going the wrong way. They're being taught that you don't have to do anything. Jesus came and died and did it all. You say. You've been born again, being led by people who have no spiritual understanding whatsoever. He said, in a year, and that's a straight gate, for wide is the gate. And he said, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. He said, and many, not a few, the majority of people are going the wrong way. He said, and many that be which go in. They're at. Go ahead. Because straight is the gate. Uh huh. And narrow is the way. Then you know there's no room for deviation in this. See, we're not equal partners in this agreement. God and man, we don't negotiate with God. God tells us what He demands us to do certain things, and then we decide whether or not we're going to do it.